Hello again, World Civilizations class. This is Mr. Lasseter with you, and we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics in history today, the Crusades. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, our video goals today, we need to consider the questions. What were the Crusades? What were their purpose? Who went on crusade? And what were the results of each crusade? So uh, some of our vocabulary terms here, uh, make sure you get them and put them in your digital notebook as you go. So the Crusades were military expeditions to the Holy Land in order to regain control, uh, territory controlled by Muslims. They were carried out by European Christians. And of course, Muslims who were in the Holy Land already were drawn into that warfare. The Holy Land, uh, which is the term I'm going to be using for this video, is the land of Israel and Palestine, which contains ho many holy places for Jews, Christians and Muslims. Christians revered this area because it was where Jesus lived and where the church began. And you can see a zoomed in map of the Holy Land there where we had uh, the Byzantine Empire right by uh, the region. And then on the inset map you can see where it is in location or in reference to Europe. So the call for crusade goes out because the Byzantine Empire feels pretty threatened by the gains of Islamic armies in the Middle East. Uh, those groups that we had talked about in our, our videos last week, the Caliphates, uh, who had been pushing into Byzantine territory. The Catholic Church in Rome, even though they were not unified with the Byzantine Empire anymore, thought they needed help. So in 1095, Pope Urban II calls on Christians to go to the Holy Land and fight the Muslim infidels or unbelievers. And those are the words that he used. Um, and in exchange for going and fighting, he promises the forgiveness for sins of anybody who goes and fight, indulgences or time off from purgatory. And it was also seen that if you died on a crusade, you were dying for a religious purpose and therefore would earn a first class ticket into heaven. Christians responded in great numbers to this. In fact, when he made his speech and uh, his call for crusade, Christians responded, it is the will of God. And so that became the rallying cry for Christian crusaders. It is the will of God. The first crusade consisted mostly of French warriors, and it begins right after that call to uh, crusade in 1095. It basically takes off in 1096. Muslims refer to all crusaders as Franks or Frange because the first crusaders were French warriors. So it didn't matter if they were from Germany or Italy or from England. Later on, just to the Middle Easterners, they're all Franks. Um, thousands of men in cavalry and in infantry go to the Holy Land. And in 1098, the Europeans capture Antioch. And in 1099, they get the most important prize, the city of Jerusalem, uh, which is the city where... Jesus had died and where they believed he had risen from the dead. So very important city for Christians. Uh, but once they captured the city, Christians were pretty ruthless. They slaughtered many people in the Middle East uh, who they saw as the infidels or unbelievers. Uh, and after capturing these cities, they didn't just merely uh, have the city and go. Instead, they set up kingdoms in these places. This map shows you where the First Crusade went. It is the dotted, uh, the brown dotted line mostly from France all the way through the Byzantine Empire over land to the Holy Land. So you can see why it took so long. Later Crusades, you would see, would actually take ships to the Holy Land as well as go over land. Second Crusade going through uh, pretty much the same path as the First Crusade. But these other Crusades are not going to be quite as successful. Uh, the Second Crusade, as a matter of fact, uh, came from European uh, Christians, and it sought to capture more territory, but ultimately it was a total failure. In 1187, though, there's a change that goes on. We think, well, maybe they'll just have some kingdoms, it'll be, they'll be set up for a while. But after about 100 years of control, the Muslim armies kind of fight back. And under the direction of this great leader, Saladin, uh, they take back control of Jerusalem. And so Saladin becomes somewhat of a, a folk hero. He's still today kind of revered in, in some Muslim countries because he manages to capture Jerusalem back. Of course, Christians in Europe, they aren't going to be happy with this. So they, that sparks a third crusade for Christians. 
It's led by a coalition from the Emperor of uh, Germany uh, to the English King Richard I or Richard the Lionhearted and even the French King. And they all go on this crusade uh, to the Holy Land. Ultimately, it fails. Um, but Richard I kind of stays back a little bit longer and he actually negotiates a treaty with Saladin that allows Christians to visit Jerusalem on pilgrimage. So even though the Third Crusade does not win back the city of Jerusalem, it does uh, basically allow for a tolerance of Christians there so that they can vis visit those holy places. The Fourth Crusade, uh, because they didn't stop there with just control of Jerusalem, many uh, Christians in Europe still wanted to go and capture it. They didn't just want to go visit. So a Fourth Crusade is organized. This crusade, though, loses focus, uh, and instead of actually making it to the Holy Land, the crusaders decide, you know what, we need to pay for this crusade, so let's go attack Constantinople, the capital of the Byzantine Empire. And so in 1204, as you see in this image, Christians from Europe attack other Christians in Constantinople and sack the city. Basically, they take all the rich, many of the riches from the city of Constantinople it permanently weakens Constantinople and therefore the Byzantine Empire, which had been in a steady decline. But there was no coming back from this. The Byzantine Empire holds on for you know a little while longer, but ultimately they're going to be conquered in 1453 by the Ottoman Turks. That's not the end of all the Crusades, but we're not going to go through all of them. There were seven major Crusades and many minor. We you know, think of a dozen or maybe 14 total Crusades, um, but the numbers can vary. Uh, but one minor new Crusade of note, which I find interesting and I hope you will, uh, was the Children's Crusade. This is when thousands of young people, no older than our students here at RTHS, marched to Italy and got onto ships to go to the Holy Land and fight. They believed that God wanted the young people to go and fight and that he would stand behind them. Well, that was a, a good idea, but they marched to Italy and the Pope tells them, go home. Well, that didn't really deter many of these kids. Some turned around and went home, but others instead got on ships uh, and they got caught in storms. These two ships agree to take them to the Holy Land. These get caught in storms and, and they sink basically ending that possible crusade. The other five ships that said they were going to go to the Holy Land, instead it sail, they sail to Africa and they sell the youth into slavery. There were other interesting crusades. For example, one that I'm not going to go over here is uh, some Christians following a holy duck to the Holy Land. They didn't quite make it, though. So what were the effects of the crusades? Well, first and foremost, many deaths. Christians and Muslims alike killed each other in these wars. But another long-lasting effect was the way Christians uh, treated Jews in Europe. On their way to crusading against these infidels, as they called them in, in the Holy Land, they dealt with infidels as they saw them in Europe, Jews who uh, lived in European places. And so we have a history of Christians slaughtering Jews uh, during this time period in Europe as well. There's also, on, the, on a brighter note, a spread of knowledge and ideas. Christians who go to the Middle East bring back knowledge, knowledge of science, math, anatomy. And so this reconnection between the Middle East and, and Europe is going to be one of our sparks for the Renaissance. There are political changes that take place as knights and, and nobles sell off their land in order to pay for these crusades. Uh, the feudal system, as we know it, begins to fall apart. But there are long-lasting problems. It's not all rosy. Uh, there is a mistrust, basically, that develops between European Christians and Middle Eastern Muslims. And that really continues even to this day. In fact, when a prominent Frenchman uh, conquered an area of the Middle East in the 19 early 1900s, he said, we have returned. So this is a kind of a modern-day French diplomat and he says, we have returned once uh, the French conquered a portion of, of uh, Palestine. And, you know, that doesn't necessarily sit well between the two si societies today, this idea of European dominance uh, over the Middle Eastern Islamic world. We'll get more into that as this course goes on and on. Review our video goals today. Uh, make sure you get your vocabulary in your digital notebook. And have a good day.